My name is Gerard Wainwright and I'm a learning disability nurse. I've co-produced this video with Milo, who has profound and multiple learning disabilities. Because Milo does not have the capacity to share his own image, we've used film and photographs which cannot identify him. Milo is non-linguistic. He doesn't use words to communicate. He doesn't speak, use sign language, point to make choices, or use any formal communication system. Despite this, Milo is a brilliant communicator and has taught me a lot about non-linguistic ways of communicating. I've learned from Milo and other people with profound and multiple learning disabilities that the way we understand each other and interact goes much deeper than words and that language is about so much more than what is spoken and written. Milo is a sensory being. His understanding of people, including himself and the world, is primarily through his senses. Adapting language is not the right approach to take with Milo, as altering a means of communication he does not use or appear to understand will not help him or us in our relationship with him. We need to approach things in a totally different way and communicate with him through the senses. We all see, hear, taste, smell, feel and understand the world differently. This is especially true of people with profound and multiple learning disabilities like Milo who may have sensory impairments and neurological differences which profoundly affect their development and how they engage, interact and learn. One of the things I've learned from Milo is he may not respond to a stimulus in the same way I would. I think respecting and valuing his differences is one of the ways I've been able to learn from him and in turn engage with him in more meaningful ways. We should never associate not being able to speak with not being able to communicate. Our inability to understand someone is something we need to learn to overcome. It is not the person who doesn't speak who is at fault. It is our responsibility to understand. Those of us who have developed language often learn to ignore our senses. By engaging with people with profound and multiple learning disabilities through the senses, we can create opportunities to learn together and make connections. Although it appears Milo may not understand language, this does not detract from the importance of speaking to him. Spoken language has many functions beyond the meaning of words. We can comfort and reassure through our tone of voice, make Milo aware of our presence before he sees us and be inclusive of him in the conversation. In this way we show respect and value him as a person. The rhythm of language and different voices can provide meaning to Milo beyond the words. The sounds we make are part of our identity and in an important way others recognise us, often on a deep and subconscious level. Milo loves music. This can be very effective when supporting people with profound and multiple learning disabilities. Firm touch will help Milo identify which area of his body is receiving contact. Light touch can be difficult and potentially uncomfortable for him. But we must also respect that like all of us, there'll be times when he is more receptive to touch and people he will prefer to be touched by. Touch should always be consensual. Although not all touch is skin to skin, the touch of fabric, wind, rain, warmth, cool air and water are all types of touch we experience that do not require human contact. These can be rich and rewarding sensory opportunities. Milo is mill by mouth due to his high aspiration risk. He has all his nutrition, fluid and medication via his balloon gastronomy. This does not rule out taste, as this could be introduced via tiny drops of essential flavours on the tongue. Milo will also experience taste when having his teeth brushed, and the use of a variety of flavours such as mint, fruit and herbal toothpaste. If a person is nil by mouth, the introduction of any taste experience must first be discussed with a dietitian. Smell is closely linked to taste. Without it, our senses of taste would be very limited. Smell is also the only one of the senses that works on the emotional part of the brain. Smells which are evocative of different times in life may provoke feelings associated with memories. And as Milo is a sensory being, he could be highly sensitive to these. Scents associated with an individual, such as the fragrance they wear, or their unique body odour, can be a strong indicator to a person with profound and multiple learning disabilities of who that person is 
and help them identify the person's presence. For this reason, it may be useful to wear the same scent when with the person. Milo loves the outdoors. He enjoys spending time under the gazebo on warm sunny days and loves to activate the wind chime by reaching out and pulling the cord to hear the clunk of the bamboo. He also likes to feel the elements on his face. He's happy to be out in the rain provided he's suitably dressed. Being outdoors is rich with sensory experiences such as the wind rustling through the trees, the sound of birdsong, the smell of herbs and lavender, the different seasons affecting the atmosphere, the temperature and the feel and look of the natural world. Every aspect of life has sensory opportunities. You don't need a dedicated sensory space for this. There are endless opportunities to support Milo to engage in a sensory way with you and his environment. Indeed, this is the primary way we should be communicating with and relating to him and other non-linguistic people. Milo has taught me that communication is about so much more than words and that by really listening with all our senses, we can communicate and engage with people with profound and multiple learning disabilities in a much deeper and more meaningful way and in doing so, become better communicators ourselves.